Hello, my name is Jan Keely. I'm technical marketing engineer, and I'm going to be presenting for you the three R's, pads layout, rules, routing, and rework. Today's agenda for these three topics, rules, where we can define them, developing your own rules using simulation, including rules into your schematic, layout, and router, and floating information down through our design path. Then we're going to examine how we can set up the rules in the schematic and adjust them based on the routing required, how to route them in layout and routing them in router, and the lastly we will look at the rework and how to avoid it by doing everything right the first time, by using verification of our routing, verifying the entire design using also simulation to see if we come into compliance based on our pre-layout simulation. So where can we get these rules for the layout? When one of the sources for the rules are vendor specification, you can look on the different manufacturer site and find a specification for components, but not only the physical layout for decal size of the component, we can also find out about the ICs or other components, how they perform electrically, and what kind of rules we need to use for them. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is previous design. If it worked before, maybe it will work on the next one. However, this may lead us to a dangerous path of not doing a proper design and the product possibility of its failure. A better way of specifying those rules by using real-life simulations based on the models, stack up of your board, how many layers, based on impedance, and, how those trans and also take into account transmission lines that will deliver the signal from component to component. And the last one is the proper termination. Based on the stack up and the lines of those traces, you're going to have to come up with the appropriate termination in proper value based on those terminations. So to do this simulation, you require tools that can handle all of that. So in PEDS layout, you can do pre-layout simulation of possible topology of the trace and looking at the cross-section of the board being that a four, six, or eight layer board and see how that affects your drivers and receivers and lengths of the transmission lines and what type of terminations to use. Once you determine that rules for this particular signal or the topology, you can include that information into your schematic. From the schematic, that information will flow into layout and you don't need to reset those rules. And then the router will also use the same rules that came from schematic to layout into router to route those critical nets. The whole point of being able to simulate it upfront, then include them right from the schematic and flow the same information down the design path is to eliminate the possibility of human error because typing four or five is very easy accidentally to type different number. But once you simulate and include and verify that on the schematic and you got it right, that same information will flow down the design path. We can of course go to the website and look for those PDFs and manufacturer websites to find out the specification. In this schematic, I already have a data book that I copied those specifications into my local library directory and I can directly open those PDF files for the review to find out what are those particular specification for each part. Here I open the Texas instrument part and I can go look at the specification of this part and find out what electrical requirements uh, that I need to meet. So that's one of way of doing that. The other way of doing it, of course, to be able to just go over without even capturing schematic and start create a hypothetical circuit that you possibly may be simulating. So going in the hyperlinks line sim, I can just uh, create, uh, and I can do control C, control V, and create a, a topology by selecting a transmission line and attaching that to my drivers and receivers. Right now, nothing has been assigned yet. So I'm going to zoom in right now and show how easy it is. First of all, the cross section of the board shows up and it starts out as a six layer board with certain copper weights for the top layer. There's power and ground and there's the electric material in between. So it takes it into account the cross section of the board uh, and what, how long the transmission line and receiver. So let's look at now the transmission line. By default, it starts out as a, a stack up, it can be macro strip, buried, or strip line, and 
as the value right now it is on the top layer 3 inches long 6 mils. Let's say I make it a 4 inch long transmission line and I'll change it to a 5 mil transmission line and as soon as I do that a electrical property gets recalculated. So it's no longer I'm doing that as a hypothetical I'm actually predicting if this tray is going to be this long with these char characters it actually also picks out the impedance capacitance and resistance of these trays. Next thing is to assign maybe a driver. So I'm going to assign a model and we have a big library of the models and I'm just going to quickly go into the model and pick CMOS 3.3 volts. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to copy this and paste it into my receiver and I'll pick U1.1 as my output. So now you'll notice that now I have a driver and I have a receiver and now I can do the simulation. So as simple as going into my oscilloscope and just make it a little smaller and then say that I want to look at my rise time and start simulation. Driver is my red and receiver is my green and you can see there is some there is some overshoot. Well, we'll deal with it a little later. This is how we can quickly build a topology as a hypothetical before even doing the schematic. We can even create what we call a differential pair and we can add the for differential pair we can add transmission lines and uh, we can also make them into a coupling line so we can simulate the differential pair drivers okay and we can even create what it's called the coupling between these two and and edit type and we can say that we want to make into the coupling region and we can specify and look at the simulation of this but right now what I wanted to do is something different I want to start with my schematic I'm gonna to go to a different page and on this page I'm gonna zoom in into this area and I'm just gonna say okay well instead of starting as a hypothetical how about I'll take this net select this net and I'm gonna say that I want to create a line sim schematic from it so I don't have to redraw it so I'm gonna load this from a DX designer I can go into schematic topology and the, here is my topology notice that U11 M26 is going to be my driver and there's going to be receivers and it already knows of what kind of models to use before I go there let's go and look at the models so I select this particular component and if I go down and take a look at it this is what models is going to use generic for DRAM for this particular circuit and a different page there is a driver for it so it is very easy to be able to to do this so now again I'm gonna select that I'm gonna say line sim I load the data there is my transmission line okay here's my drivers in the receiver so now I can export to hyperlinks now what it's going to do it's gonna launch my hyperlinks it's a little big so I'm gonna stretch it a little make it a little smaller and move it into my window so you can see what I'm doing now I didn't have to redraw the schematic or anything it's basically draw the schematic in simulation for me for this particular circuit now I and notice that the models are assigned transmission lines are there and I can quickly simulate so if I go and look at the simulation I'm gonna for the rising edge make sure that my colors assigned for my probes and I have now like take a look at the simulation if I turn off this probe you'll notice they're exactly the same because they're the same length so now I can go and say oh, wait a second this is just too much of an overshoot 2.9 volts an overshoot in this particular topology so now what we're going to do we're gonna minimize that for now and we're going to add an RC terminator to this topology right here uh, and uh, let me just zoom out a little bit okay so here's my RC terminator but right now this RC terminator is with no values default values now I can use my wizard and now I can apply the value of this termination automatically within exact value 5% and I'm going to say apply values to this termination and you'll notice that it shows based on the length of the transmission lines and the cross 
it shows the proper termination values for this RC circuit. Now, before I'm going to go back into simulation, I'm going to save this particular simulation, save that for my future use. I'm going, because when I'm going to go into route this board, I want to look at how close I came to this simulation using my post layout line sim simulation. So I'm going to, I'm going to save this as a, a save as, as a hyperlinks. Okay, let me re-simulate that, start simulation, and here's my previous, and here is my previous simulation. This is how much clo uh, we reduced our overshoot. So now if I'm going to save that as a hyperlink CLIS, and going to save this the terminated, terminated, terminated oscilloscope view so I can reuse it later in my design and I'm going to save that okay so that's how easy it is to so once we find out on this transmission line length or maybe we can view and say edit values and route them on a different layer and find out all those results then we can go into our schematic and include this information on the schematic for this particular net and we can specify the let me open the const constraints for it and uh, we can specify the length of this particular net maybe what layers to be routed and maximum length and all of this information will come into our layout so let's say we've done our simulation I've showed you before we now import an information from the schematic and layout and the rules are there. You don't need to sit and re-enter those rules because they already came from the schematic. Now you can start routing those critical nets either interactively or in the batch mode and they will follow those rules and the rules can be like match lengths, certain minimum lets specified for the clocks, differential pairs, of course, they will be routed together as differential pair, but some differential pair require the lengths associated with them. And there is a minimum, typical, and maximum length can be incorporated. And the tool recognizes all of that. As one of my examples, as you can see, uh, there is a yellow and green, it could be a red, meaning that yellow, it didn't even come close to the minimum. When it changed the color as I route, to green that means I am between my minimum maximum limits but as I continue out in there actively in and the length monitor or the spreadsheet changes to red it means I went over my maximum limitation so we have very quick and way of identifying with either interactively routing with the length monitor that attached to your cursor and we can also watch that in interactive in spreadsheet in the router when we route that interactively or in batch mode critical traces that require lengths associated. So it shows us what is estimated lengths, what is unrouted lengths, and what is the routed lengths, and if does it meet our specified length. Now that we finished developing our rules by using the simulation tool we can now incorporate these rules into our schematic here is the same schematic with the page and i can select this net and notice in this this net called 2n68 i can specify length minimum and maximum for, for this particular net again those rules were developed using the simulation on the other hand here is another group of nets and i select both of them and select the second one and now it's a differential pair and differential pair we can specify what is the minimum maximum length also what is the trace width to use for this differential pair and the gap so all of the rules from this command will be imported into the layout board. so in this board right here is nothing more but the outline dimension some board like plate notes but let me look at our design rules design rules under the nets there is nothing there and under differential pairs there is no differential pair specified. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to import the schematic information that we developed using the simulation and the rules for certain critical nets. So I'm going to import an ASCII file of this uh, data and all of these components are now imported. But besides the component there is connectivity. But now if I review my design rules now, first of all my clearance under default are 6 mil clearances and the trace width is specified. 
now under the differential pairs all of a sudden I have my differential pairs with appropriate length specified for them now remember that B sync B minus it was 2.45 2.5 the uh, width of the traces was 5 and the gap is 5 I'm sorry the width was 10 all of this is information came in from our schematic and if I go look at my classes under clocks Again, I have my, my clocks specified for different uh, routing. So if I go and look, it's also under my nets and show me the rules with the nets. And here is some of my clocks. And notice there is a routing and high speed associated with them with the minimum maximum length for those particular traces. And routing, it says to route only on layer 1 and 2. So all of the rules comes in from my schematic. So I can now go and place this board. But this board already been placed, so I'm just going to open it to save me some time. So here's the place board, which I can go and start routing in, in the pads layer, but I'm going to take it right into the pads router. And I'm going to activate the pads router, which will take this layout and import it in my routing. So I can start doing the routing in that environment, which is much more powerful. And uh, even if you need to move some components, you can. It's not an issue. So let me zoom in on one of the uh, nets and let's say I'm going to start routing a net. Of course if you need to you can move components flip them also in this environment. So I'm going to interactively route a trace. Notice that as soon as I start routing this trace remember I told you that we have what is called length monitor and I'll zoom in a little closer on my cursor it specified what is the minimum maximum length this particular net that needs to be and notice because it's yellow that means I haven't even approached my minimum now it's in green and now that means that I am between my minimum and maximum and as I route this trace can get finished now on the, if I'm going to scroll a little bit over here now and start routing this trace all of a sudden I get two traces the reason there are two traces attached to my cursor and it's the same thing I have now length monitor attached because it is a differential pair again it's telling me what is the length and I can double click and it will finish this particular one. On the other hand, I can just go and say, how about I'll select all my differential pairs. I will already route that one. And I'm going to select the rest of them. And I'm going to zoom out to the entire board and say, why don't I route my differential pairs first? And I can issue, and now it's doing what it's called batch routing of differential pair with associated length. And uh, as it's going, I'm going to zoom in, I'll show you what it's doing. What it's doing is it's routing differential pairs, but it's also doing accordions on the differential pairs because there is a length associated with these particular ones. So now if I go and also look at my spreadsheet in here for this differential pairs notice that it's showing me that this diff pair and diff pair 4 is routed within associated length so it's telling me what is the estimated length what is unrouted and what is the finished length if I look at this particular two nets it's routed completely it's in within green so I can go and route this individually interactively or in batch mode and again, now I'm not just basing this layout on the hypotheticals. I actually develop the rules, specify those rules, and I can route those rules. And once they're routed, uh, I can then check those rules, which we'll cover later in the presentation. So how do we avoid rework? Well, the important part is to do the appropriate steps prior you start laying out your board. And that is really, to me, starts at the very beginning, before you even start capturing the schematic. You can do pre-layout simulation based on hypothetical drivers, receiver, and cross-section of the board. Or you can start from the schematic by selecting an app and going to pre-layout mode and say, well, here's my driver, receiver, and a cross-section of the board, and let me see what the possible results are. And you can save those results for the future to review them in routed board and see if we achieved our targeted results. Then we can route those interactively or in batch mode and verify inside the pads layout on router if we do meet our specified length. But the final result or the final telling is it's not just the 
just length itself, we can verify our entire routed board based on the specified values, the drivers, and exact lengths via transitions from layer to layer to find out if we do really achieve our targeted specified working of the circuit based on a pre-layered simulation in post-layered simulation by taking entire routed board from pads layout in hyperlinks board sim which is the post layout part of it and simulate exactly same critical nets and then take the pre-layout saved simulation oscilloscope results and overlay them with our post layout simulation oscilloscope and see how close we came to specify specification because in this time it's not necessarily that we have to meet this exactly the same length but if we meet our plus and minus targeted envelope and make sure that the circuit will work electronically so it is important to do this post layout simulation and I will show that in our demonstration down the line. Now we have routed this board completely to all the specification that we have put in based on our simulation from the schematic. Notice that it done a pretty good job. Here is some differential pairs with the accordions that system put in by itself in automatic mode. Notice they even have some of the arcs. But I uh, want to draw your attention to one section of the board. I deliberately been doing uh, some manual routing in this particular one and it does decouple my differential pairs and this leg got a little longer. So I can run what it's called the high speed check and um, it will find some of the errors. If I select this error right here and going to look into properties tells me that this particular one is over half a mil in the disseparation. So now also if I select this particular net right here and I'll scroll over and uh, you'll see that this particular net does not really adhere to my property. So if I'll select this as my differential pair, I can issue what is called a tune command. Now please pay attention what is going to happen. It's going to go and remove this extra stuff and now it's back within my green and red uh, limitations in for this net. So this is how I can go and fix either that inside the my router or pads layout and fix the errors for the high speed and supposedly everything is okay. But this is really half of the story. Now all it does is check in that we meet the length specification, but does it really meet the working requirements of my electrical envelope? So from pads layout, I'm going to say tools, analysis, and I'm going to go into signal integrity analysis. So what it will do, it will take this design and it will extract all of the information I don't need the plane areas for right now. And it will extract all the information and will load that inside my hyperlinks. So I took all of the information from the pads layout, extracted the cross section of the board, all of the connection vias and the traces for simulating in hyperlinks. Let me show you the cross section of the board. That came in from pads layout. If you want to make any changes, you can and you can back annotate that into pads layout. Also, in here, we are going to verify not just the length of the traces, but we also take into account the actual working of each component electronically and see the effects of traces, vias, as transmission lines and see if we can meet our electrical envelope working just like we did in the pre-layout and we will compare those results. Let me just zoom in so you can see that it is exactly the same layout that we came in from pads layout. Notice all of this accordance and everything is there, but now it knows every single length of each segment on what layer it was routed and will take that into account for simulation. Instead of simulating entire board now, we are going to concentrate on that one net that we've done on the pre-layout and it's called data bus zero. So we're going to sc uh, scroll down to uh, data bus zero and we'll select that particular net. We'll say OK and we'll zoom out and I'll zoom in on this area. Sorry, let me do it one more time so we can see this particular tray. Uh, it's starting from U1226, it's going to U14 and 28. Now if we look at our component You'll see that uh, we're going to make that driver just like we did in our pre-layout simulation. And now we, we can now simulate this circuit. 
Just like we simulated the rising edge on the pre-layout, I'm going to simulate the same thing, same net, in the post light and see how close we come to our result. I'm going to select simulation and you'll see that my cayenne color is my driver and the green in red is my receivers. The little difference is the, because of the propagation delay because there is a difference in length for this transmission line going from one uh, from U14 to U28. But if I look at my overshoot it still looks about 2.6 volts. Now what I can do is, uh, which is very useful, I can load now the simulation for my pre-layout results and overlay them in my scope. So I'm going to say I'm going to load Load, and I'm going to load the LIS file and it's called data bus no termination. So now once I load it, uh, this is what it looks like when we uh, simulate it in, in pre-layout phase. So if I activate that, notice that there is a difference in propagation delay and actually under this green one, I have both green and red. But the results are on overshoot almost exactly the same. So this is before we simulated it and this is after we laid out the board. So results are pretty close. So what we're going to do next is we are going to now add determination just like we did in the pre-layout. I'm going to select determination wizard and it's actually going to run and pick exact termination based on the length of transmission lines, the layer transition and vias, and the drivers and choose the most optimal one. And again, it's decided to add an AC termination. And we can add this termination values. It even choose the values for me automatically based on all of this information. And I can add that as exact value, 1%, 2%. I'm going to choose 5%. And I'm going to apply the value. So it basically added a hypothetical termination. Where did it add it? If I go look at my component again, it decided to add at U24. If I go look at my terminator, it says this is the values it added. 47 ohms, 95 picofarad at U28 pin 13. It is significant because it chose the most optimal location for the effectiveness of this termination. So now if I'm going to go now and simulate this again, start simulation. Now it shows me what happens to my receivers, both receivers. Notice the entire overshoot almost gone. So if I look at my previous result, this is how much overshoot I had before and I move previous and this is how it looks after I terminate it. Again, I'm going to load now that the same circuit that I saved away when I did pre-allows simulation and terminated it. Again, I'm going to say load and I'm going to load the LIS file and said data bus terminated. This is after terminating my pre layout. So once I read this in, you'll notice that this is what it looks before, after I terminated it, and before I terminated. So now you can see that the results are very, very close, but this. The actual board layout showed me the real results, but it, both of them come very close to actual working unit. And this is how I can really determine where are the problems before I build my prototype. It is very powerful and easy tool to use to determine that. On top of it, of course, you can run what we call board wizard, and you can run entire board, and you can check for the single integrity for EMC analysis and get entire report and concentrate on the trouble areas of this design. So now that I showed you that, I wanted to iterate. Just doing the pre-layout simulation is one thing. Incorporating the results from this pre-layout simulation into your schematic and driving into layout is also excellent. And then routing your traces to those lengths and check it is great. But again, when you check in the pad's layout, it only tells you if the length is correct. But does the circuit work electrically? And the final result is really doing the simulation as we did in here here in hyperlinks layout by taking fully routed board and building a virtual prototype. Easy to use, not hard, it does not really add any much to design cycle, it actually cuts out the time because it we may remove design cycles because if you build a product and it, does, and it doesn't work, you have to redesign it, rebuild it, retest it, and here we can do it virtually. Awesome tool, easy to use, and it can help you going forward. So in reality, it does help us with the rework by doing the design right the first time by determining the rules 
specified the rules, routing to those rules, and then verifying with hyperlinks to the rules, which will eventually remove, rework, and cuts down the cycle time. Again, you can take my word for it, but I really encourage you to look at some of our success stories, and some of our customers do tell us after they start using this concept of doing it as a design process, but not as not as an individual piece, just simulation, just routing. By combining that into integrated flow, they really have achieved targeted result much faster. And here's some of our customers from Sedona. Paul Pepping said that using pets and its high flexibility promotes the very easy of doing their design of the complex designs and doing it right from the first time. Another customer from SIE Computing Solution, Dan Wu, said that by using the uh, simulation, integrating the simulation into the design flow, they were able to really quickly uh, route with the high-speed auto routing, but then also simulate with signal integrity afterwards to make sure that they made that envelope, and they were able to cut down two months of the design prior of using this uh, scenario to of only 40 hours. As you can see, it's a great way of doing the design and make sure you can shorten the design cycle. Yet another customer from Lightspace said that within PadsFlow I can do everything myself. I can define the rules and pre-layout, I can incorporate them in schematic, I can route the board, and then I can even post-simulate to make sure that it works. A great success story, being able to handle the entire process by a single engineer. So in summary, I want to make sure that you understand that the PADS is not just the PADS layout. PADS is really the compilation of the expert tools that let you cover entire design process by doing pre light simulation to define your envelopes. Then you can incorporate it into the schematic, the simulation of pre-layout, and drive those rules right into the layout. Because rules are important, and we want to make sure that we follow them by using the routing tools which PADS does allow to do it in interactor or batch routing to support those high-speed rules. And then, the most importantly, we want to avoid the rework by using those tools to do this virtual prototype simulation by developing the rules in pre-layout, incorporating them in a schematic, forward them into layout and router, and then post-verify them after the board is finished before we actually build our first prototype. I hope you found this seminar very useful and be able to, going forward, to incorporate those techniques in your design processes. In addition to that, please visit our mentor website and look at, at Multimedia tab that has additional webinars that are pre-recorded that you can download that covers all kind of different topics, being the thermal analysis, simulation, routing, or other aspects that can help doing your job more efficiently. Thank you.